must do his duty To be honest and true Report what he knew So he informed his superiors Diligently His concerns and his fears Just fell on deaf ears They didn't want to hear The guts and the gristle But as a man of the law And what he stood for You ready? Well he knew that he must find the wicker <laughs> The whistle of honesty, truth and morality. You ready again? He knew that he must blow the whistle. Now our government so vile have put him on trial for revealing hard truths to his nation. But the truth cannot die in the face of their lies and the truth will be his vindication. And David the cry had the truth on his side. Ready? The day that he knew the whistle Thank you, David. It's an honour. so much to all the supporters. Thank you to Consortium. <laughs> We're going to be in the courtroom tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a circus. It's going to be history. Um, and uh, that's going to be great. You know, really, really good. But um, uh, it's the final clash. People of the truth. Truth versus lies. Let's see what, who wins. Yes. Do you expect the courtroom to be really open? No, it'll be closed, yeah. They'll say it, they don't want to say it's closed because that makes them look bad. But they, um, every time anything happens, I'll say, I'll have to close it for this, this very secret thing. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, it's ridiculous, yeah. Yes, like what time, the canteen or what, what yeah. they have for their lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the toilets were, yeah. 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 So are you worried or hopeful? And, uh, I, I'm hopeful that it's all going to turn out eventually. Yeah. I'm not hopeful about this particular trial. What about the judge? <laughs> well, he's very conservative, as they say, so he's unlikely to uh, listen to any of our arguments. He uh, didn't give Bernard Cleary any breaks, so... Um, but maybe he's going to surprise me. We'll see. He seemed a bit worried about looking at handling classified documents. At one point he said that if he mishandled them, he could be put away for 10 years. Yeah, well, I think there's a pretty good chance he'll sentence me pretty heavily. Yes. It's suspicious because he wasn't our judge until a month ago. And he was replaced. We had a good judge. Yes. And he got replaced. Uh, the good judge got replaced by him, so... He, uh, and everybody knows his thoughts on national national security. Yes. So it it, it it looks good, but they can try anything. We're not afraid. And yes. um, the thing I've got up our sleeve is I'm not afraid of jail. And Give me a round of applause. They are. They are. Do you expect the people who committed these crimes to ever Just, face the same as what you're tomorrow. facing? Oh, of course not. The attorney general. It's actually about the individual soldiers. It's more about the generals that I want on trial. Um, the and they will never, and they don't even have to answer any questions. Yeah. Um, but now that is a must be failure. Yes. We need to. The, the, the biggest crime, the, the biggest war crime, was the war. Yeah. Uh, the so fact that it wasn't um, properly run. There was no plan. That is the biggest problem. And putting a, putting a corporal in jail. Right, or private is not going to make any difference. That's but, what they should do. Uh, we need yeah, to we get need the generals to answer some hard questions. David, yeah. There were Liberal and Labor governments in power when these war crimes were covered up, which is why I would think it's reasonable to infer 
Liberal and Labor combined to defeat the motion by, as it so happens, another whistleblower, Andrew Wilkie, to drop the prosecutions against McBride and Boyle. And this is out in the open. They're not even bothering to hide it. It's so blatant. It seems to me that they have so much contempt for the Australian people that they just expect us to swallow this nonsense. David is facing a very, very unjust situation at the moment. He has been let down by our government. So there's three arms to our government. There's the parliament, they make the laws. Then there's the executive, they administer and implement the laws. That's the ADF and the AFP. And then there's the judiciary. So he made a complaint to the ADF, they gaslit him down. He made a complaint to the AFP, they didn't want to know. He tried to get public immunity, defence, and the government came in and said, no, we're going to not let anyone hear any of the content that is the basis for that. So they let him down there. So now he faces a trial. And I hope that we still believe in the doctrine of separation of powers and that the judiciary are going to do the right thing. But this is not an even fight. And if it was about right and wrong, well, David would win without a doubt. But we're in a very crazy world and we don't know what the jury are actually going to get called because there's going to be claims over a lot of evidence. So they might not be told much and that's what's so scary about this trial. What the government seem to be claiming a lot of the time is that there's all this classified information, that's why parts of the trial might have to be secret and jury members won't hear it. And what David did was expose the systemic cultural issues within the ADF. And when he exposed them, he exposed the rot at the top. And they didn't want that. So they sent it all off to an inquiry, the Brereton Inquiry, that picked some low-hanging fruit and none of those higher up have been responsible. And that is what they're trying to protect in David's trial. And that's why it's so important that we go there, we sit in the court, we bear witness to this injustice and we say no. And we bring our whistles and we don't whistle them in court, but we go outside and we blow our whistles for David McGrath and we stand by him every day of this trial, whether you're here or on social media. Come on up, David and little David. It is a serious business. Uh being a whistleblower, I don't uh, regret it. I don't uh, need any sympathy. Uh, we're here for justice. I, I was made for tomorrow. All my experience has bought me. If anybody has to do what someone has to do tomorrow, it is me. Uh, one of the things that we I saw last week um, is the beginnings of what will probably happen and it won't surprise anybody here but sort of mainstream ignoring uh, of what's going on um, and a certain amount of sort of underhand smear campaign. I'm not the right kind of whistleblower. Um, oh, I had personal problems or, or you know, somehow try to put, uh, I'm just doing it for my own benefit. <laughs> Do you reckon I'm doing it for my own benefit? Yeah. yeah, exactly. But you will get people saying things like that. And if people want to question me, say, read the book. Read his book. Uh, we know the projectiles go in a, a consistent pattern. Now, I only ever wanted to join the army, even though my parents were doctors. My father was a whistleblower and uh, in relation to the drug thalidomide, and he was obviously quite a brave guy, and he had many, many thousands of patients whose children he delivered. Uh, he came undone later in his life over some experiments in rabbits, and he made the mistake of not admitting what had gone wrong. But he was a good person. My mother was a doctor. I went to the right schools. I didn't have problems at school. I went to Sydney University. I graduated in law. I didn't set the world on fire, but I graduated. I went to Oxford University, not because I was so smart, but because I did a bit of horse training. But again, I finished. 
was a boxing champion there. I went to uh, the British military. I was accepted into uh, one of the most prestigious regiments. Uh, I tried to join it, the British SAS. I was a true believer in uh, democracy uh, and those who defend democracy with force. I came back to Australia and I joined the Australian Army eventually after being a barrister. Now you have to pass quite a few uh, behavioural tests to become a barrister. You have to really be uh, above board in everything you do. Um, and uh, you can't be bankrupt. You, know, you used to, I don't think you could even be divorced at one stage. It was a very old and worldly sort of profession. <laughs> so I was a barrister before I joined uh, the, the Australian Army. I went in as a captain and I got um, promoted to major. Uh, I got sent to the biggest base in Australia at Townsville, which was a, uh, a job for someone on the way up. I did a tour in Afghanistan and got excellent reports. And I did a tour of Afghanistan with the Special Forces and I got excellent reports. Now, looking at the trajectory of my life, is it really likely that I'm the bad guy and the government is the good guy? No, it's pathetic, isn't it? It's absolutely pathetic. And you know what? My trump card is that I will go to prison with my head held up high. And even if I have to do 10 years, does anybody here doubt that I will be able to do that with dignity and strength of character? If you compare me and the way I've handled myself to people like General David Hurley, who wouldn't even give evidence to the secret ministry's inquiry, spoke only through his lawyers, signed off on Morrison's secret ministries, got special treatment for his favoured charity. Big question marks over that man sitting in a palace while I get ready to go to prison. Now my haters say, oh, he's not a war crimes whistleblower. No, I'm a command whistleblower. Does anybody here have problems with that? Does anybody here think that's bad and you don't like me because I actually say the problem is with the generals, not the corporals and privates? I don't think so. You people know that it it's not going to make this country better if we put a private soldier in jail and say, oh, there we go, we'll fix that problem. The problem is endemic. The problem is systemic. The problem is with lies in every single part of this government. Robo-debt wasn't a coincidence. We saw how government lawyers act. They lie. They lie when the truth would do. And they got caught out in robo-debt. But don't think, well, you people know, but this is for the people who are going to see this on video. Robo-debt is how government departments run. They think up some tawdry political stunt that is going to get them promoted and they put it into action and if anybody says it could be illegal, they, they are the ones who are shunted out. They are the ones who are shut up. PwC, and I want you to think of these things tomorrow and chant them tomorrow maybe, robo-debt, PwC, the secret ministries, and I'm the one facing prison. We've seen Oliver Schultz suit someone on TV. Someone tried to say to me yesterday, oh, but you don't want SAS soldiers to go to prison. I don't want innocent SAS soldiers to go to prison just to make the media happy, no. But yes, I do think Ben Robert Smith should be on trial, fully enough. Yay. And is he on trial? No. no. How many years is it going to take? 20? It's funny how they acted a bit faster on me than they did on anyone else. It shows you they care more about secrets than they do about crime. As Eddie said, it's not national security. Another one of the smears is, oh, but surely you must understand that we need to keep some secrets secret. 
Here's a little test for you. Yeah, as Eddie said, do you think the location of the toilets in Tarrant Calp was secret? And yeah, it is secret. Anything to do with the Afghanistan war was classified secret. So when they say, oh, he revealed classified information, that could have been the fact that Trooper Bloggs had a boil on his ass, Lance, on a particular date. Anything to do with the operation, whether it was food, boots, toilets, anything in the Afghan theatre of operations was classified. So if I release classified information, it could have been the amount of bog rolls we had. It's pathetic. Don't fall for it. It's not about classified information. It's about crime. It's about government trying to hide under that umbrella. Can we trust them? No, we can't trust them. They're going to say everything is classified information. If I had revealed the Holocaust, they would have said classified information, classified information. Everything is classified information. And you should say to them, what was it? What was the information? You can even give us a summary because it was usually crimes, it was usually embarrassing, it was usually things they did not want you to know. That's not classified information. That's hiding the truth from the public who have a right to know about it. It's not codes of secret submarines. It's when people at positions of power broke the laws of Australia for their own selfish reasons. Now that is not something which should be allowed to be kept secret by the government just because they say so. Now we start tomorrow and there's a very good chance that I will go to prison. I don't care about that, as I've always said, it's neither here nor there. We need to clean up this country. It's not gonna clean up this country if they drop the charges. Um, it's not going to clean up this country if I go to jail, but it will draw attention to the problem. It will make more and more people look. Read my book. Tell people to read the book. The book pretty much has it, and there'll be another book where I can actually talk about what went on after the book stops. Say to people, is he a bad person? Yes or no? Uh, and is he... How does he compare to David Hurley? How does he compare to Ben Robert Smith? How does he compare to the head of PwC? How does he compare to the people that ran RoboDebt? Why is he the one we're gonna put in jail? With all the things that have happened, weapons of mass destruction, Abu Ghraib, collateral murder, none of those people have faced jail. You know, so say to people, you are, you are sort of my agents. Get out there. When people try to put me down, when people try to ignore this uh, as not being the biggest show in town over the next three weeks, say, look, it is the biggest show in town. There's a bit of a dog fight. We always like to see that. <laughs> Lucky it's not Jake for once. <laughs> uh, he might lose his special status as an assistance dog. <laughs> Hopefully he'll say it was provocation and it might have been a government agent dog. Anyway, uh, I've been going on uh, too long, but I want you to remember, and I always want you uh, to thank you. Yes, it's not a huge crowd here today, but it's huge in my heart. You are part of my family. You are the people who have kept me alive. You know, I was on death's door a few years ago because I couldn't get, I saw journalists, as Eddie said. I saw the most famous journalists in Australia. Uh, I, I saw the police first. You know, people, and I even forget that myself because I've become so disillusioned. Um, and then I get criticised for going on, you know, doing a YouTube channel and people say, oh, well, you don't look very well on your YouTube channel. Well, how well would you be if everything you believed in turned out to be a lie? And the the famous investigative journalist wouldn't help you. And no one really seemed to care that much. We care. Yeah, exactly, you care. You care, and I feel so strong. I really feel like it locked me up and put me away. You know, and, and, and you guys know this, but you know, if, if because it's an unlimited uh, sentence that I face, um, and 
while we don't have the death penalty in this country, it's if they did change it, uh, they would be able to execute me. Now, people say that I'm nuts and everything. Well, I was a soldier and I signed on for what I believed in. But if they said to me, you either back down or we will execute you, uh, everyone here knows I would say, fuck them, let's do it. Um, because uh, you're either right or you're not, and I will not back down. I will not back down because of smears. I will not back down because of threats. Even though I've got two young children, you have to set an example. Um, and we have made our peace. I'm almost 60 years old. I've had a really good life. I couldn't really, uh, you know, I couldn't complain. Um, and Davis. standing up for what is right forgot uh, one thing. is something which you can be very, very happy about. And uh, so people often ask me, would you do it again? Fuck yes, I would do it again. Um, and again and again. And I am so grateful um, to you. And I just did my job. And as someone just said, I'm going to steal her phrase, I did just do my job initially. Now I may be a hero, but the government have made me a hero. And they hate that. They hate to see us laughing. They hate to see us blowing our whistles. They hate to see us having a good time. Because I can tell you, the dweebs who hate me, like Mike Pizzullo and the other, uh, anyone else is like talking out the side of their mouth saying, oh, he's not really who he says he is. They hate the fact that we hold our heads up high and we face what we face and we might be a tiny minority, um, but in 10 years, 20 years time, everyone is gonna pretend that they were here in Glebe Park today.